You could say hawks eat your chickens. No, yeah, hawks do eat my chickens. <laughs> bird, steak. Bird, um, bird bile. <laughs> yes. You got my dad out there making jokes like, oh, it's genetics. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my dad's not that fast. Like, <laughs> the, the length of my chest is how deep his chest is. <laughs> oh. You have some beef with him early on, or? <laughs> oh, early on, yeah. For really? Sure. Yeah, no, didn't like each other. My tricep was bruised. From him just grabbing me. What? Smell the hand. <laughs> Another one of those things where I'm like, I didn't mean for that to be a bigger yeah. thing than it is. <laughs> Going through the open was really, it was tough. It, like, I, I guess it, it may not have looked, it was tough. Um, <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Clash of Combat podcast. Today, we are joined with US Open champ, Vito Arujo. How's it going? How's it going, guys? Great to be here. Yeah, it's doing good. We're so excited to talk to you, get into the Get into this podcast. We heard you wrestled Yanni in eighth grade. Yeah. yeah we've, uh, I mean, growing up, we wrestled, I want to say, like, eight times. Okay. I got one win. So, oh, jeez. Yeah, no. It's not a great record, <laughs> but... Uh, you have some beef with him early on, or...? Oh, early on, yeah. Really? Sure. Yeah, no, didn't like each other. Really? Oh. Yeah. Because, um, I mean, uh, so I'm from Long Island. Okay. And he's from Rochester. It's like eight hours away. Right, complete other sides of the state. Um, and, you know, I would train within, you know, my club. My club team was really good where we were. Uh, mm -hmm. And we didn't really hear, you know, too much about, like, anything going on in, like, upstate New York. Like, for the most part, we had some of the best guys, like, in the state. Like, some in some cases, like, in the country, we had a lot of guys ranked in the country. Mm -hmm. um, so one of our guys goes out. And loses a tournament, and we're like, to who? He's like, I don't know, this kid from upstate New York. Another one of our guys goes to a tournament and loses again. We're like, who's this like random guy from upstate New York beating all of our good guys? And then I, uh, I wrestled him. We wrestled him the first time. So, yeah, I like to say the first time we wrestled was like uh, in like sixth grade. Okay. I started wrestling in the fifth grade. Oh, so why I is had that? no idea. Yeah. I don't remember that at all. But he, you know, probably pinned or tech me really, <laughs> yeah. really bad. Um, so he remembers that, and he, he sees that he has me next. He's like, oh, this is going to be an easy match. Like, mm. I remember beating him up, like, two years ago. <laughs> yeah. and, and we met in, like, the semifinals of Super 32 oh, in, like, okay. the eighth grade division, uh, which is funny because on the other side of the semis match was, like, Dayton Fix and, like, someone else. I, oh, geez, no way. Yeah, like, but um, so we, we had... Uh, like, I think match starts, he comes out, takes me down, and, like, I don't know, I think I get an escape, turn around, fireman's to him, fireman to his back, and held him on his back for, like, the rest of the first year. Oh, <laughs> like, that had to feel good. He's just fighting, really. <laughs> and I think the final score was 10-9 to 9 on that match or something. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, he ended up beating me, going to, he won uh, the rest of the bracket, he had fixed in the finals. But then we met again. So I had, that was my first loss to him. I'm mm. pissed. He's officially <laughs> beat all of our good guys. Oh, I know. Um, so, in eighth grade, you're allowed to wrestle varsity in New York. Okay. So, you know, I go out. I, I'm wrestling high school in eighth grade. So is he. We're the same age. Yeah. So, uh, we, you know, counties, whatever, state tournament. Mm. And now we wrestle. We're on opposite sides. We wrestle through. We beat all the high school kids. <laughs> So now it's just two eighth graders in the state finals. <laughs> That's so cool. And we have each other again. And it went to, I want to say it was a 3-2 match, triple overtime. Oh, so it went the crap. full the full mile. Uh, I would ride him. He would ride me. We both got one takedown, I think. Uh, wow. Or no, no, we couldn't ride each other. That was the thing. We couldn't ride mm. each other. Oh, yeah, yeah. And we had a one takedown each. Going into the third, I think he wins the coin toss, and he's like, oh, I'm going down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so he gets up, 30 seconds, wins. I'm like, ah. God. <laughs> ah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, and then uh, wrestled the Super 32, or no, Super 32, state finals, and then the next time we wrestled was uh, the like Journeyman Classic mm. tournament in upstate New York. It's usually got a pretty good turnout with some really good guys. Um and we wrestle again there, and I think it's a 4-1 match. So I'm just pissed. I fucking hate this kid at this point. <laughs> yeah. um, and then my, my dad and his dad were, like, talking. 
like un- unbeknownst to us, mm. you know, we had no idea. Like at, at this point, like I don't like him. He does not like me because <laughs> I like give him really close matches. Um, and our dads are talking and basically what they came to was like, wait, we have like the two best kids in the state. Why don't we just train with each other? And then our kids will be like by far the best. Damn. Um, okay. So I'm fucking pissed, but then like, <laughs> because I had just lost yes. again for the third time to the same person like that. I have in high school, I, like, I had lost, of course, mm. but I always, like, come back and redeem my losses. Sure. Just didn't happen. Just couldn't so, figure it out. Just couldn't, just couldn't, get the, yeah. couldn't get my licks back, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, but my dad told me, he was like, all right, we're going to go to his house and train. I'm like, okay. <laughs> oh, all right. I'd be pissed. Yanni has got the same, Yanni has the same re- reaction. Yeah. His dad told him, like, uh, we're going to go to, <laughs> we're going to go to Long Island and train with him. And he's like. What? Like I thought we didn't like him. He's like we're we're gonna go share with him. Okay, so you know we I would spend a week at his house. He'd come spend a week at my house, and we, you know, uh, I mean there was a lot of a lot of respect at the same time because you know we're both really good at wrestling, and we both are kind of on the same sort of path where sure. wrestling's basically our entire lives. You know, uh, go to school, come home, and it's just wrestling. Mm-hmm. Um, so you know we we ended up becoming really close friends. But we've wrestled the fourth time I think was was so uh the Russian national team came okay uh to Cornell and they wrestled like the I, I don't know if it was the USA team or like or if it was just like some of the, some of the USA team guys and some of the Cornell guy. I don't mm. know. It was a weird little like production. Sure. We actually had it in Bartels next door. And so we just have like the Russian national team there. It's like, and it's just like a dual mate. It's just oh, like, what the heck? but they had uh, like three matches before the meet started. Mm. And Coach Cole, our previous head coach, was like, uh, went to me and Yanni, do you guys want to wrestle? And like, you know, the kid, I'm like, that'd be really cool if I could wrestle before like this crazy match yeah. with like some of the like, best guys. Yeah. So me and Yanni wrestle, and it's freestyle rules. When there were when there was a seven point tech, okay. So well, I never knew there was a seven that. point tech. Uh, yeah, yeah. There used to be. I mean, this was before you could win the periods. So oh, the, the one before mm. that, I think, was there, it was just a seven point tech. I don't I don't know the specifics. It was, yeah, but it, that's what it was. Um, I didn't really. I don't think I remember the rule set at that no. point. But I'm like I don't know. I had trained freestyle a bunch because my dad is. Um, really good at freestyle. Yeah. <laughs> so we trained freestyle in my club over the summers, and Yanni had really no freestyle experience at all at this point. Oh. So I feel like I was cheating. Yeah. <laughs> but I'll take it. You know, it was like a close match, and then we got into like a scramble position, and mm. I'm just exposing him, and he and I didn't expose, so I just I end up on top, and I scored seven, and they were like match over, and he was like, oh. what? <laughs> <laughs> That's so, the one win. That was my one win. <laughs> oh man! Tacked him in a freestyle match when it was a seven point tag. Dude, and well, then, yeah. We, re- we ended up wrestling. This is a funny one too. Okay. Uh, so I think he beat me. I don't know if there was one in between. There was. I think there was like a fourth match, but fifth and sixth, we. This is our first time trying out for the. Um, the cadet national team spot. Okay. This is our first time. We're like, you know, in high school now, but um, we're, uh, we'd never really tried out before. So, and my, my, our dads are like best friends at this point. And we're good <laughs> friends at this point too. But our dad's like, there's no way they're making the team, right? <laughs> Let's just send them at the same weight. And if one of them makes it like to the finals, like that'd be cool. Like basically, yeah. like, ah, if they'd have to like make the finals like to wrestle each other, like just put them in. Uh, and then we made the finals and <laughs> beat everyone else. And so we had a best two out of three match for the world team spot. Oh, and, oh my God, he, I shot like a low single and he does it now very consistently. At the time he was just kind of like figuring it out, but he sat corner, cradled me and pinned me. Oh <laughs> no. Ah, oh, <laughs> so pissed. And then we had like a four, six, two or something match, uh, in the next one. But yeah, we've had we've had a chronicle. Okay, yeah. so you you have hist- had history, that's for sure. Oh, for sure. It was, was it almost in the cards that you go to the same college, or was that just luck of the draw? 
No, it was completely unrelated. We, we just both came to the same conclusion separately. Wow. I mean, it's like, I don't know. For us, it was kind of like, all right, we really like wrestling. But at the same time, we, we both, like, separately, like, you know, talking to our dads from our families, understand that, like, you have to, like, get a degree, like, from a good college and, you know, be able to kind of, like, have something after wrestling. Mm. Um, and, I mean, Cornell's just, like, especially at the time and especially, I mean, now, too, it's just we're the best smart wrestling school. Yeah, without like a doubt. Yeah. yeah, it's not even really no, it's close. Not close. Um, so, I mean, you know, if you, if you care about, you know, having, you know, the post-wrestling, you know, stuff. And it's not like, you know, you can get a degree from anywhere. Sure. But there's – Cornell's offered a really good uh, system for that. What, um, are, what are you majoring in? So I do sociology. Okay. Um, and I wrestle a lot. Yeah, <laughs> clearly. <laughs> What what drink are you drinking there? So this is post. Oh, post- I just I just made a uh, an iced coffee. Oh, perfect yeah. at night. Well, you know. Oh, I guess. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I was walking in the Friedman, saw we had a pot of coffee on, and you know we don't have like I don't know. Yeah. yeah. No, <laughs> I I, I love coffee. That's my advice. So. You want some? I'll try some. Sure. <laughs> yes. One to ten. It's like oh. a, it's like no, it's like a it's like a six. Yeah. Oh, it's bad. It, it's not I mean, terrible. It, there, it's steamy. there's a lot of there's a lot of it. creamer in it, but like it looks like white, pretty light, but it tastes pretty coffee. Right. Yeah. It's it's, it's, a, it's a weird. Uh, that's how I, I would make coffee. Bro. Really? Yeah. I don't like like black coffee. Oh. I'm not gonna lie. I need like a lot of sugar in my coffee. Yeah. <laughs> but dang. So you started wrestling in fifth grade. Why didn't your dad put it put you in sooner? Um, so my older brother, uh, so, I mean, we bounced around a bunch, uh, because, um, so my dad is from Azerbaijan. My mom is from Belarus. I was born in Belarus. My older brother was born in Ossetia in Russia. Oh, wow. And then my little brother was born in California. (laughs) So (laughs) we're like all over the globe. Right. Um, but for the first couple years of my life, you know, we, Moved to the U.S. when I was like two or three, mm-hmm. and then we lived in California. Then we, you know, moved to um, kind of like the inner city area. So we lived in like um, lived in Queens, in Brooklyn. So we're like you know hopping around a bit, and sure. now we find our way out into Long Island and kind of get settled. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's when like the real training, I guess, began. Okay, um, and you know my. My brother had started when he, when he was in the eighth grade, uh, and then I started in fifth grade. My little brother started in fourth grade. But, mm. I mean, at that age, right, you're able to, like, comprehend way more, uh, way more ideas. Sure. And you have way better body control. Mm. So, I mean, at the end of the day, you may – and this is going to be a hot take. What you can learn from – that you know starting wrestling at four years old right from four to 12 i could learn from 12 to 13 if i just picked it up yeah so at the same time it's not like you're at a huge disadvantage um and great that i had a i had a great coach um you know my dad my dad was really knowledgeable in the sport um for anyone who doesn't know my dad is uh his name is vogar rujov he was a two-time world champion uh, and took third, of the, third in the 1992 Olympics. Um, he also took, like, I think, fifth at one of the Olympics, but he doesn't like to talk about that one because he didn't get a medal. Sure. <laughs> um, but, no, he was, like, he was him for a while, uh, mm. you know, because he wrestled at a time also where when it was the USSR. So oh, wow. he wrestled for the Soviet Union. Holy so he had crap. to beat, like, all those good countries <laughs> just to be on the team, yeah. And then would go and and compete at the world championships. So. Your your dad actually uh, two years ago he went he brought like I think about a dozen kids to go. Tra- uh, they were traveling across the country and he went, stopped at Askren Wrestling Academy, yeah, yeah. Wisconsin. So I was there and I, I think he was there for like five days and he ran us through some practices. Uh, so that was your, my first time you know meeting your dad and seeing that. So um, 
He's, he's a cool dude. I, I love the accent. Yeah. Like, it's, <laughs> it's so different. It's like, I have to hear what he says. Oh, like, my God. We lived it with, like, <laughs> we've lived in the U.S. for, like, 20-something years now. <laughs> it's, it's a choice for him oh, now yeah. at this point to, like, keep his accent. Because he definitely could have, like, phased that out and, like, learned better English than that. And he just, like, learned for the first, like, two years Mm-hmm. Got like a good grasp on it and was like, this is good enough. Yeah. People yeah. can understand me. So, uh, yeah, it's That's hilarious. Funny. Well, and then um, I, I got to say your, your post-match interview after you won NCAAs and, um, well, well, I mean, first, just I guess just like hearing your dad, you know, you're just talking it up. I thought that was cool. But then what I thought was interesting is you said that your m- main goal, of course, was to never win an NCAA title. You're focusing on that world title. Um, so, I mean, growing up, right, my, my role model within the sport was always my father. Um, you know, if I could just be as good as him, you know. Um, and he was never an NCAA title. He was never an NCAA champ. It didn't have the same meaning to me growing up yeah. as it obviously did to a lot of other people. Like to Yanni, like he was like, oh, look, I want to be an NCAA champ. And along his journey, found the passion to like, and I, I'm not trying to speak for him. Sure. But I think, at, like at some point he was like, no, like, I want to be a world champion. I want to be an Olympic champion. And he definitely thought that younger, but I think, like, kind of, like, you know, was reinforced as he was mm-hmm. going. And mm-hmm. when I started, you know, I never, like, I probably didn't even know that, like, the NCAA, thi- like, NCAA championships was a thing until, like, a year into wrestling. Sure. Like, I wasn't, like, you know, it, it never really, so it was never, like, a goal from the start mm-hmm. and along the way it became a goal yeah right so you know i'm very uh very happy very mm-hmm. you know appreciative that you know i did yeah. win one uh, and hopefully i get another chance next year so i can run it back <laughs> but um yeah i mean because i i was you know people were obviously uh had mixed reviews when I said that. Oh, really? Yeah. I, like, I, th- I thought it was cool. I thought it was awesome, too. I, I appreciate it. You know, and I, I think that's, that's kind of what, what I was thinking is just, you know, this is fantastic. This is great. You know, I'm, I, I just won NCAs, and it's, it is a big deal, mm-hmm. you know, but it, it's not like a – it's not a reason to, like, you know, hang up my hat yeah. And, yeah. and call it a day. So it's a really nice uh, – indicator that I'm doing kind of the right things Mm -hmm. and you know I feel like I am getting better uh because that's that's like and end of the day like all I'm trying to do is just continue to get better every year Mm -hmm. and eventually you know I'll just kind of be the best guy um and you know I'm not really sure if I'm the best guy now but I think I'm still getting better every year and that's all that I can really ask for myself I don't know if you felt this way, but from a spectator spam, sp- standpoint, you just ran through the U.S. Open. Yeah. Like, I mean, <laughs> dude, you're teching Austin DeSanto in like 30 seconds. It was, it was a minute, I think. It was a minute? Yeah. But still, like, he's one of the best guys in the U.S. I mean, well, not even including just the national championships. Like, you know, everyone was thinking it would be, you know, fix RBY again, you know, for that third time. And then you go in there and handle – what we thought, definitely. Yeah. Two of those guys. I've been going on a run. Yeah. <laughs> I've been you doing pretty say. good recently. You could say. You know, uh, and it's so funny because, you know, for the past couple of years, um, you know, I, uh, I don't know. I've always been kind of in contention with mm-hmm. a lot of those people because, you know, at the end of the day, like, the top three guys are usually pretty relative to each other. Yeah. And it kind of just depends on kind of what happens that day in that moment, right? Mm. Who wins? Um, but, you know, previous to this year, I went on a pretty long stretch of not winning anything. <laughs> you know, I was taking second, third. You know, I took fourth at the NCAAs my first year, third. Um, you know, I, would, I lost twice. I lost in the... Uh, Olympic trial finals. I lost to Gilman again in Final X last year. So I was like, you know, I was in there. Mm-hmm, I was yeah. good, but I just it just wasn't. What what clicking. did anything click now, or is it just yeah? yeah what you know what was it? I so I I put a lot more emphasis on like 
the mental aspect mm. of the sport. Because at some point I realized, no, it's not a skill issue. I'm, you know, I'm confident that skill-wise, um, I am like one of the best, you know, especially like within the country. Like mm-hmm. I think my technique and like my understanding of, of, of the sport is really high level. So that's not the issue, right? And so then I thought, is it like, is it physical? Is it conditioning? Is it, am I not strong enough? Like, no, it's not that either, right? Mm. My style plays really well into what I'm good at, Yeah. right? I'm fast. I don't have to be the strongest guy. You know, I don't have to, you know, do anything that's not, that's not me. Yeah. Um, and obviously you can be in better shape and everything, but I was in good shape. I wasn't getting, you know, gassed out by people. Um, and things just weren't, weren't clicking. So I think, you know, taking a step back and kind of realizing that, you know, I've never really thought about the mental aspect because there's, there's like, I don't know, ne- not necessarily a stigma, but it's like, you know, people are within wrestling are told to just like, you know, just go, mm. you know, like I can bash your head against the wall and just keep going. Um, and that wasn't really, it, at some point it wasn't working for me, right? That wasn't the goal. Um, so I think I took a lot more time to kind of like, I don't know, understand myself a little bit better. Yeah. And, you know, what am I doing? You know, why, why am I doing it? Sure. Um, and I think that, that really helped me kind of, you know, and I don't even think it really made me any better, per se. I just think I was super inconsistent, mm. you know, with my performances. So I had like, you know, if I could compete within this range, all I really have done this past year was maybe just bring up this bottom scale a little bit. Yeah, that makes sense. So I could just compete a little more consistently at a, at a, at a high level, right? Mm-hmm. Because, you know, if I compete from, from this scale and the guy I'm wrestling, if, I'm, if my range is here and the guy I'm wrestling is here, you know, I just need to have a bad day and he has to wrestle pretty well and he's, he's going to get me. Mm-hmm. So just bringing that up a little bit is just has made the made a world of a difference, I think, personally. Yeah. Well, that makes sense. Yeah. I mean, you're the representative of the tornado headgear community. <laughs> 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 you know, I never really I never really threw my name in the ballot, but <laughs> somehow unanimously, yes, I've, I've been elected. Why wow. do you, why do you wear the tornado? My so my oh, ears yeah. are oh. really like out yeah so this one like points like this one's a little more flat back but this one points out so like the traditional headgear uh like sits and like i have to like push my ear up against to it and it's got like little holes on the inside that are like sharp so like it would cut me Mm, and i was just like this is silly (laughs) and the tornado has the really deep cup so my ear can like fit in there much more comfortably um and I just think it's comfier. It's easier to adjust. Like, I don't know. Sure. But um, I didn't think that that decision would have much larger implications. Yes. Crosby's a, um, that headgear yes. wear as well. Tornado since Tornado. Eighth grade. Yes. <laughs> and, and our head coach even more. Yeah. Uh, it's like, yeah, it's like. <laughs> it's just a select few. Within <laughs> wrestling, it's like almost a little smaller cult. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's hilarious. Yes. I think it's so funny. <laughs> I th- it's so much better though, like the it is. Like but the, the other ones you have to like reach your finger in and like yeah. No, I I have a hard time adjusting mine. Yeah. That's for sure. But the thing is, like, we'll never change it. Yeah, we'll never <laughs> no. change it. It's no. just that's the headgear that we use because just because. Yeah, you know, like <laughs> we're not gonna change it. Yeah. We could make headgear way more comfortable yeah. and like way more like mm. efficient. Uh, we're just not going to. Yeah, <laughs> like. <laughs> What if you could like in folk style? Would you choose to not wear headgear? No, I would never wear headgear. Yeah. What am I? What am I protecting? Yeah. <laughs> Look at my ears. Like, want me to get hit in the head? Yeah. <laughs> no. Growing up, I thought having cauliflower ear was like the coolest thing. Like, but I could never get it as a kid. Clearly, I mean, I think it all comes down to like how hard like guys are actually hitting you. This is just stupid. I'm just gonna say this story, but I would actually put like clothespins on my ears to try to get cauliflower <laughs> oh ear. My goodness, dude. <laughs> <laughs> never worked. My ears kind of hurt, but never worked. But uh, never, never, never really got there. 
never got there. I did get a little clay flyer. Ended up getting way too big. They cut it off and sewed it up. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you got it cut, huh? <laughs> yeah, I got it cut. And... I got my ears drained probably four times and then twice. But I just at some point I just gave up mm. because I mean if you give it like two weeks it just like sets yeah. and hardens. So yeah. damage is done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. You were draining it yourself. No, 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 I would have someone do yeah. it, but like, <laughs> I've seen too many horror stories of Drake. <laughs> like, uh, like Yanni, his one ear's a little like, like, uh, shriveled up because at one point, I forget who did it, but like, they just poked holes and squeezed it out. Yeah. No. And I was like, I, oh, oh, come on. Dude, that's Mine's too far. Like sh- it's shriveled. It's not horrible. But no, it's not horrible. It's not like smooth I like think yours. It's a, yeah, t- I mean, no, mine is. Can you put an earbud in there? I can. Okay. What? But I, they so like the the like the Apple ones they don't they they can oh, get yeah. go in but they'll fall out super easily yeah, yeah. so we're like the Beats one that has like the little that, ear oh that go over oh, yeah, yeah. yeah that makes sense that's smart perfect okay you know. that's smart um <laughs> <laughs> Man. yeah well um so I I just kind of want to talk about so you're part of a you know Spartan. Uh, Spartan Apparel. Mm-hmm. So how, how's, how's that going for you? How has the overall NIL kind of affected you as a wrestler? Um, you know, Spartan's, Spartan has been great to me. Um, you know, they put a really nice emphasis on, you know, making us feel taken care of. Because, mm. um, you know, we're not like a huge like sponsorship, right? There's only like a select few guys that are really on the on the roster. Um so I feel like they do a really good job of taking care of the needs of the individual. Okay. Um you know, I came out with a, with a couple shirts uh and there's there was a decent demand so we're you know, we're we're trying to get those those out. Um but it's funny you say it, like the NI, the whole NIL thing didn't become something that I was really like taking part of until this year. Okay. Um, and I, you know, I might be the one of, I think I might be the only one who kind of fell into this situation, right? So Cornell doesn't have scholarships because we're an Ivy League school, right? So, uh, so I get a lot of financial aid. Okay. So I was going to school for, you know, just about free. Um, but when NIL came out and we could start making money, I was looking at the numbers, I guess, and I could start making money, but I would have to then tell the school and I would get less financial aid because of it. Oh. So then I would just be making money, but unless I could You'd make more money more than I could, yeah. you know, then I would have to pay for college, then oh, it made no sense. Yeah. So I just didn't put out a clothing line, didn't do anything besides Spartan, and for the Spartan stuff, you know, I didn't, you know, they gave me like a, a little, you know, they, 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 they did a really good job of like taking care of like gear and mm-hmm. like, you know, a bunch of other stuff. And, you know, they're really closely tied into like our yeah. program here as well. So, but yeah, so I couldn't, I was put in a position where I basically was like, oh, you can make money now, but unless I can make more than $400,000, <laughs> like it's like not worth it, you know? Yeah. yeah. No. So it's like. Right. So I just chose. I just opted out of it for a decent bit. But now I'm kind of like, I guess, you know, trying to get trying to trying to get into it at this point. Now okay. that um, going into my senior year and like all the stuff is kind of like already done, mm-hmm. so they can't like take away my aid now if I make money, um, type of thing. Sure. Um, is there a uh, potential veto veto shoe on the way? You know, we're working on it. We're, yeah. uh, you know, my maybe. Uh, Personally, I, I like uh, like Yanni's shoe, mm. um, you know, because obviously he he got got into the whole nil thing like much much sooner than I did. Um, but you know, the those shoe the shoes that are based off of kind of the old like the exeos, yep. you know, the like the Russian national team shoe, <laughs> and those are like our favorite shoe growing up. Okay, so. I, like, if I were to make a shoe, it would just look really similar to that. Really? Okay. That's so, what Yanni said the same thing. They, yeah. He kind of based his off of that. I, I was seeing how would yours different from his. Do you, do you know? Honestly, I don't know. I might just, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> might just grab a couple, couple colorways and call yeah. them the vetoes. Like, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. That's... Um, 
but yeah, I, I don't know. We'll we'll see kind of what else is down the line. Sure. Um, but yeah, how is school here overall for you? So it's good. You know, they. Uh, you know, I feel feel like I'm. You know, doing doing a lot. I'm I'm definitely working for my degree. Mm. Uh, it's definitely a lot of work. You know, some of the classes are decently challenging. Um, and obviously, with kind of the schedule that I run, where you know, wrestling's a full time job, and you know, school kind of demands a decent amount too. So, um, but you know, the teachers are really understanding of kind of the situation that that we're in as well. Mm -hmm. um, they allow for, you know, a decent bit of leeway. So, you know, I feel like I've, you know, I've done the best I could. And, uh, you know, I, I, I do okay in school. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Is it hard to get into the school? I mean, obviously yeah. it's Ivy League, but like... It's, you know, I think the thing that people say is like it's the easiest Ivy League to get into. Oh, really? But the hardest one to graduate from. Oh, that's oh. interesting. So it's like the classes are, like some Ivy Leagues, most of the Ivy Leagues, don't want a high dropout rate, right. so their retention is really good. If you get in, you're most likely going to graduate. Yeah. Mm. We have a higher dropout rate than most IVs. Why do you think <laughs> um, that is? Classes are hard, and it's and it gets cold. It gets cold. Oh. Uh, you know, so not everyone wants to stay. Um, but I love it here, honestly. Yeah. I think it's a really good kind of dynamic, because I grew up on Long Island, um, so I'm like pretty used to like city life, mm -hmm. kind of. Um, and, you know, coming to Ithaca is like a really good kind of piece of everything because we have like the little bit of city life within Ithaca, you know, within the commons and like, you know, there's, there's places, there's a bunch of stores, there's, you know, uh, but at the same time, like if you drive 15 minutes out in any direction, you're just in the middle of nowhere, right? So yeah. you can get kind of that like countryside type of vibe as well. And then you throw on top of the fact that, you know, we have just waterfalls running through our campus and stuff. It's, it's you know, it's really cool. There's yeah. waterfalls? Yeah. Oh, Where's that? Cool. I'll show you guys after. All right, we'll go check it out. <laughs> it's a nice day. Did, did you have, like, a really high ACT score? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I got, like, a 26 or something, but my... It's higher my, than me. <laughs> um, my high school grades were good. I think okay. I graduated with, like, a, I don't know, like, a... 95 because we did out of 100 oh okay. what so, yeah. wait high school what do you mean so like we had like gpas like yeah no like it you could calculate into a gpa but like un unweightedly or weighted i don't know they just uh would give it to us like out of 100 like what is your i don't know like 100 being you got all a's yeah and then oh. you could go above 100 just as you can get like a 4.1 right oh yeah. yeah but so i had like a 95 i guess i guess would be like a three Nine three eight. Oh. I did not know that was a thing. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I guess. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you have any predictions who you're gonna face at Final X? You know, going through the open was really. It was tough. It, like I, I guess it, it may not have looked. It was tough because um, you know, uh, quarter round I got Nation. Nashon's someone who was, I, I've trained with before. He used to train here during kind of the COVID time. Um, so, you know, we're pretty familiar with each other's skill sets. Um, and God, he's got a really, really tough double. Um, <laughs> so, you know, that was a tough match. And really there was only like two openings for me to score. And thankfully, like, I, I capitalized on him and got the scores. But I had like, you know, one takedown, which I forward him and then went gut and went lace. You know, and it's a six-point move, so it looks like I'm winning by a lot. Mm, right. Realistically, we were scrapping the entire yeah. time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and it was really close. You know, I was just able to, you know, score the most points when I could. Uh, and then he hits me with a mean double out of bounds, gets a takedown, and then I finish up with, you know, my own takedown at the end of the match. But it was, you know, that was a dogfight, you yeah. know. Mm. And then the next round I have Tomasello, who is just – a tank, <laughs> God, he's he like I think I think the, the the length of my chest is how deep his chest is. <laughs> <laughs> Strong guy. Uh, so you know I have Tomasello and we're just you know hand fighting hard, uh, and I knew that's what that match would be because you know we've wrestled before as well. We we're on the national team together uh, last year, so we would you know train together during national team camps and stuff. Mm. Um, you know, 
just hard hand fighting, but I was able to find kind of my offense to that single leg um, and kind of run him out a couple times and just, you know, score points where I could. And then the DeSanto match was just, uh, you know, I could tell if, if I didn't, you know, get score those points early, it would have been a, a dog fight yeah. towards the end. Uh, just the way he was grabbing me. He grabbed me, and, you know, the match is 50 seconds. We, we spend 30 seconds of that on our feet, mm. and the last 20 is me locking up a lace and, right. and doing the turns. My, my tricep was bruised from him just grabbing me. What? You serious? Was it your first time wrestling DeSanto? Yeah. Okay. Crazy grip, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, I'm just like brutal. I'm like, holy shit. So, you know, thankful that, you know, I could get to, you know, the, my offense, get to that, that little. And it's all like stuff that, you know, I'm very well drilled in. You know, little snap, drag, single, shelf. And, you know, within the U.S., being good at, being good at top bottom is really beneficial, especially overseas. You know, overseas, you know, top bottom is make or break of certain matches. Mm. But if you're, you know, I have a good leg lace. It wins a lot of matches for me, yeah. like a lot. You know, if I can get to my setup and get this locked and and bundle your knees, I'm pretty confident I'm going to attack you. Like, it doesn't matter. Like, I think I've gotten really good to it, like, redirecting. So, like, we're not going out of bounds. I'm scoring. Mm. I don't care if you're up 8 nothing. I think I can get it, you know? <laughs> Um, but yeah, so go, oh, com- going out of world team trials and you have like, I think Soriano probably came up too, right? Um, no idea. No idea. Cause well, and Fix, Fix didn't really wrestle. Not. I don't like, I obviously I just wrestled Fix NCAs, but mm-hmm. you know, uh, freestyle is different. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not really too sure, I guess how he's going to stack up against the other guys. Obviously you have. Gross, our pre our previous world team member last year, who just took a loss to DeSanto, and I just wrestled DeSanto, and then you have Tomasello in there, and then you have Nation in there, and then it's gonna be a dog fight. Yeah, it's gonna be a dog fight. I think, I think if Nation can get to like his offense, he's really dangerous. Mm. Like he's he's teched gross before he, you know he just took a loss to DeSanto, not too long ago, and that's like but he was up like oh I, I saw that match he was yeah. up like eight nothing on DeSanto and DeSanto just grinded him down and came back yeah. ten came eight back or something the, yeah, um, so it's it's really <laughs> it could I don't be anyone know maybe? it could yeah. be wow. little and you have you have Fix who's like the only world medalist yeah or, yep. Is, no, I guess Cologne. Cologne was a, was a medalist as well, but okay. I don't know. He took second in the world. Like he's pretty good. Yeah. So like, <laughs> you can't really count him out. Yeah. So it's it's gonna be a crazy. But you beat Fix in freestyle, didn't you? Uh yeah, 2019 in the oh. um, Olympic Olympic trials. Okay. I had him in the semis and I won six five. How, how do you think of this idea? Because you, you know you list all these wrestlers that you're at your at that same weight. But not clearly, not all can go to the world championships. What if there was just like a three hundred man bracket world championship open? <laughs> I would not want to wrestle. <laughs> <Fucking terrible. laughs> how, well, how many days is this? Are we trying to finish this in one day? This is the one day event. Chance. Oh, twelve matches. Go. <laughs> no. Yeah, I, I just thought of that. I'm probably, honestly, that was that would probably not go over the well. The open is probably like. Uh, I think I prefer wrestling in those, like, having to qualify for them. Mm. And just three matches, everyone's the best in the country. You know, have at it. Sure. I think those are dope. Um, the Opens are fun, too. But, like, uh, the first round, you're, you're catching, like, some guy who just, I don't know, like, is either, like, a coach or, like, yeah. does jujitsu and heard about <laughs> wrestling. Like, it's weird. Sometimes, like, I, I, I've had some funny first round matches sometimes. Just, just why? I don't know. You just get out there and you not like it's not like they're bad every time like sometimes I'll have people who I'm like all right like one time I had this coach mm-hmm. first round at say like 2019 senior nationals I had this coach and you know uh 
I think he took me down. Or <laughs> I think I shot and he head pinched me or something. Okay. Um, and I'm like, all right, we have to scrap. Like, I don't know. <laughs> I'm like, here I am. Like, all right, I'm going to take him down, like, lace him, blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, he's scrapping. And I'm like, oof. Well, like, <laughs> you know, so you got some hidden gems in there, too. Because we, I don't know, win a couple of matches, but. The, the whole process is just a little funny sometimes. Gable, yeah. Stevenson's first match back was against that coach from... Uh, oh, yeah. Where is he uh, from? He, he, well, he coached... He's a D2 Manc coach, Mankato. Mankato. And he's a heavyweight wow. coach at Mankato. And that was the first <laughs> match that... <laughs> yeah, his first match back. You just see him, like, smiling on that. Like, obviously, he knows. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah, Olympic champion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Imagine. I came yeah. for fun. <laughs> 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 That'd be pretty cool to say though. Your first no, that yeah. You wrestled I, Gable's first match back. Yeah, yeah I can't. <laughs> yeah. Oh well, we saw on your Instagram uh, the you you were part of the wrestling video game. Oh yeah, ninety one overall. You know, I, I gotta bump those numbers. Up. <laughs> Hopefully, after my last couple of things, they you know push my numbers up. But well, I mean. I mean, touching touching base. We did you know talk about your open and national championships, but I, I, the main thing I think everyone saw was your speed that they never saw really before. Um, do you think that's natural? Could that be? T uh, could it be taught? Yeah, there's definitely ways to be faster. Sure. You know, it's not. And obviously, you know, my, you got my dad out there making jokes like, "Oh, it's genetics." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my dad's not that fast. Like, <laughs> I think I think I've kind of. You know, early on, like in high, like not early on, in high school, I kind of figured out that this is what I'm good at. Mm. Because I tried, I learned to wrestle how my dad does. He's got a much more, you know, not strong man, but it's really basic. Mm. He focuses really good position, good hand fighting, you know, setting up your shots, taking your shots, which is great wrestling. You know, mm. that's textbook. He's textbook. Um... But, you know, at some point I just, you know, realized that my strong suits didn't kind of fit into that. You know, in high school it's tough being like, oh, like, I kind of want to wrestle this way. And my dad's like, I'm a world champ. Do what I'm doing. <laughs> You'll win. Like, you know, so, uh, but eventually I've kind of found what works for me. Mm -hmm. um, and, yeah, my, you know, my skill set was kind of based towards that, that speed. You know, I have really good kind of explosiveness, right? Mm -hmm. At the same time, I feel really good kind of um I have a really good feel for it uh where I'm not really necessarily looking where I'm going I just kind of know where I'm trying to go mm. um and over the years it's it's much more refined you know I think I can like take a shot and stop you know within a couple millimeters of where I want it to be sure right um but when I was younger, it's funny. I was just fast, right? <laughs> so I would just shoot really hard, but I couldn't stop or like figure out where I wanted to be. So I would just choose a direction and just go really fast in that direction. <laughs> I'd like his legs that way and then just like dive in there really fast. Um, so, but uh, no, you can definitely train it. There's definitely like little things like sure. working on staying on your feet, working on like explosiveness, like obviously like box jumps and stuff and like agility ladder and like jump rope, just like, I don't know. Yeah, being light on your feet and then being able to like, I don't know. I feel like a lot of, a lot of the same things that work for boxing work for wrestling. Okay, that makes sense. You know, but yeah. How much percent of percentage of your training is, that's not also mental and that's not wrestling is based on, uh, whether that be lifting some weights or running? Do you do any of that? Yeah, yeah. What I you, uh. You know, run. I go for like, I don't know, morning walks. Okay. Uh, so it's like a little jog, I guess. Mm. Um, you know, I don't, I don't know. Last time, like I did like a sprint workout was, but we, you know, we will throw it in every once in a while. But you know, I do that like one, two, three, like three times a week, and I'll lift twice a week, and then I wrestle. Uh, Four days a week. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. 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 So in your duel against Arizona State, the announcer okay. was saying 
you were going like like this to the guy, and you're yeah. saying like you're doing the smell the hand text. Smell the hand. <laughs> one of those, another one of those things where I'm like I didn't mean for that to be a bigger yeah. thing than it is, but apparently people like it. So, yeah. Um, no, it's like so versus like fast guys. This has been a problem for me before, where I'll reach for them, kind of with an open hand, and they'll just level change on me, and I'll like fall yeah. over the top, and I'll just get hit with a double. Mm. This is like hard to get underneath. Yeah. So if you start to drop on me, I can follow you down or I can like catch you with it. So it's not meant to be like, oh, my like it's here. there's technique behind it's it. Like, it's strategy. No, there's a, <laughs> I think there's a strategy to like I I try to make it where everything I do is purposeful. Mm-hmm. So there's a reason. Whether it's a good reason, you know, there's probably better ways to do it. Yeah. But this is kind of what I've come up with. Um and you know, there's a couple of different things that like I might do from there, but yeah, the smell of your hand. Yeah, <laughs> <So>, like, <laughs> sure. We, we saw the uh, Mongolians. Is that where they're from? Yeah. They were in here training with you guys, yeah, showing yeah. throws or something. Yeah. <laughs> do you wrestle cool. them? Yeah, yeah. We, uh, we've been we've been scrapping. They came in on uh, on Monday, so you know we've had a, a couple good roll arounds. Okay. Yeah, the guy they brought is is pretty good. It, uh, at my weight, so okay. you know we've been we've been having some fun. <laughs> <laughs> if you could change one rule in wrestling now or add a rule, what would that be? What style? Do one for folk style, one for freestyle. I really don't like in folk style how I can get two takedowns. I can take you down, cut you, take you take you down, and cut you again, and you need one takedown now. And now the score is tied, right? I think that's stupid. Mm. Um, I think takedown. Like I don't know what the solution is. If takedown should be worth more, or like there's got to be like some sort of criteria for getting the escape point. Okay. Like maybe I can opt to like let you up without like. Oh. Like giving you a point. Yeah. I just like if we you know restart or something. Like I can if I cut you, it's not a point or something. I don't know, but that has to be worth more to me. Mm-hmm. Especially for someone whose skill set is, like I, I feel like neutral is like my best position. You know, I'm not like the best top wrestler. I feel like everyone's pretty good on bottom too. It's not like you know, yeah. it's not like that can be your best position. Sure. So, um, you know, I feel like uh, that's undervalued a lot. Yeah. Uh, so some something to make that easier, where you know, my takedowns are worth more. Um, than mm-hmm. your escapes. Yeah, you I know. agree. It's I agree way so much more effort to like, it's so much like, I don't know, I should be winning by a lot more because all I did was, I did everything. I took you down and right. I let you up, but now you get one takedown towards the end and your takedown is worth more than my two. Yeah. yeah. Right? Um, freestyle, you know, I, I kind of like where our rule set's at right now. Okay. Um, Something I would change. Uh, I don't know. You, you know, can, I think yeah. uh, I think we're being a little overzealous with the cautions, like okay. stepping out. Like if you, I don't know, freestyle is a little um, yeah. harder to harder to identify yeah. like a certain thing. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, I like because a lot of it is like. Um, you know, something's something's an issue. We make an amend or a rule to, to address that issue, right? Mm-hmm. But then don't think about like what are the consequences of that rule change. So then maybe we need another rule change for that rule change, right? Because yeah. people were, you know, it's like it's like playing video games where like everyone's just trying to find the new meta. Yeah. And <laughs> kind of you know what's the best class to run within you know the rule set. So <laughs> you know uh, you know you had people not wanting to give out push-out points so they would drop to their knees and technically now you're grounded so now you don't give out a push-out point but now if you drop now you're now it's a caution right if you drop intentionally trying not to give up the push-out point so Mm -hmm. now you're 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 so now instead we're going to go caution one and if you are grounded they're going to put you back down so it's like oh what you know i i don't know but and i'm not even super like against that idea i think it's a good idea because it oh it was so scummy it was so scummy <laughs> when you'd go to push someone out and they dropped and you're like uh yeah that is <laughs> did bogus. all that work that it's bogus. nothing right so um 
you know, I like whatever they whatever they do. Really, right now is is kind of good with me. I you know, I like the the current rule set. Yeah. Do you like a uh, or would you like a push out and folk style? It's tough. It's tough. It's tough to make that call. I think. Like, like yes, but at the same time, no. Because the out of bounds rule then. Or like how you cut how much that. wrestling, but it gets rid of like the the stalling type yes, stuff. Yes, but think about like on the edge, like all that wrestling, mm-hmm. like if a guy is like one leg, like I like one foot back, yeah, I right. can pull him in. But it, it makes people wrestle more. It I mean, does people, make people wrestle more for yeah. sure. Um, I think there's a lot of. I've wrestled a lot of matches in the folk style season where people will try to avoid wrestling, yeah. <laughs> which. Fair, you know, you <laughs> want to keep the score close. Yeah. Best way to do that is not get in wrestling positions. Um, <laughs> you know, so you know, I, I'm chasing. I'm just like chasing yeah, yeah, you around. Yeah. I'm like, this is silly. I'm like, <laughs> we're not wrestling. But <laughs> sometimes that feeds into like their strategy. It's like I'm gonna run away. He's gonna mm. chase me. I'm gonna dive at his legs. You know, so sure. I hate that strategy. I hate it with a passion because <laughs> I always fall into it. I'm like, just <laughs> let me grab you. And like, uh, but, you know, so I think in, in freestyle, everyone just ties up. You never have someone who's just like, it's so hard to like kind of avoid contact and not just get hit, put on the shot clock. Yeah. Right. So do we need a shot clock? Mm, it's not bad. I don't idea. know. But it's like, you know. I'm not too sure. Yeah. Well, um, I feel like at the, because the guys that are like playing the edge on you are like, I feel like are more likely the guys that aren't really in the running for a national title, if that no. makes sense. I mean, mm-hmm. but all the guys at, at the freestyle oh, wrestling, like the top guys, they're all the guys that have either already won a national title or were in the running for one. Yeah. So. I think, I mean, yeah, of course. Like, if you're, if you were confident in your ability, you would just be like, oh, I, we can tie up and I'm going to get to my things and I'm going to take you down and yeah. win, right? And that's what, you know, you know, Fix and RBY were, you know, they were confident that they were going to win and, you know, right. came and tied up and kind of, they were working to set up their own moves, which allowed me to set up my stuff as well. So it was, you know, that's what, that's what high level wrestling looks like. It shouldn't be me chasing you. Right. But I, I understand. Yeah. I understand. <laughs> I'm not, you know, I'm not that... I'm obs- I'm annoyed, but I'm not like mad. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah. <laughs> Between those two, who do you think was like? I don't want to say like better, just because they've wrestled, but like I which think one was like relative. I think you yeah. know, at that level, like everyone's good. Yeah. Right. Um, and they have really differing styles and skill yeah. sets. Um, because Fix was good. Fix, you know, did a lot of good things. I just, you know, was able to. You know, kind of emphasize, like uh, capitalize on those on those points, right? Like I'm I'm on bottom. He throws in both of his legs. He's in his you know best riding position, and from there I get a reversal. Yeah. So it's like just everything I probably could have went wrong for him went wrong. Yeah. Uh, and you know, with the RBY match, it was a it was really there was a lot of like background stuff going on. Like there was a lot of kind of, not mind game, but, like, kind of chest movement, mm-hmm. um, where it's, like, if you're just standing in the wrong spot at the wrong time, like, you're done, right? Mm-hmm. Like, I think that's how I got my first take down, right? Like, we're we're kind of, like, testing, seeing where, where, where our openings are, like, where we're safe, kind of feeling it out, and you reach, you know, I'm, I'm obviously controlling the wrists and stuff, and he just kind of like tests and reaches for my foot and I like he I you know I down block the first time and he goes for it again I you know right right in on his ankle right and I'm able to like get to my my single and finish through um and I mean there was some 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 luck in there too right like I've never hit that standing cutback from yeah. before <laughs> that was crazy like, but it was just something in the moment I was like it's there and you know, I didn't even really think about it. I just kind of felt it and did it, and it worked out perfectly. I think it, it, worst case scenario, I would have got away because mm. at that point I'm still on bottom, so I'm just like, yeah, get true. off me. Uh, but like at the same time, like I was saying before, like uh, you know, I'm on bottom, and now 
I'm holding you on your back. Yeah. So it's just big swings of points, um, I guess, is what, like, let the score get away. Yeah. You hear guys saying, like, sometimes they don't even feel like it's them wrestling the match. It's just, like, they're, like, watching themselves wrestle. Yeah. Is that, is that how it, like, felt kind of? Um, I understand what what that is. Yeah. Um, but, no, I feel like I, uh, I feel like I just, like, hit a button, turned my brain off. Yeah. I just, like... Gave my body control to wrestle however it wanted. Because, mm. um, you know, I trust in my training and, you know, myself uh, to make the right decisions in the right moments. Yeah. Um, if, you're at, if you're out there, wrestling's a super fast pace. It's hard to make decisions. It's hard to think, yeah. you know, because you, you spend one too long of a second in a position and that could be like the decision of the entire match right mm-hmm. so making quick decisions and just on on your feet thinking is like crucial right so the less personally right for someone who moves really fast as well if you got like a really slow methodical type of you could probably get away with a little more thinking i really can't provide the luxury myself to like you know have a moment to sit there and think, you know, I got to keep moving and keep getting to my, my offense. Right. Mm. Because your dad was a world champion. Do you feel that pressure to do that yourself? <laughs> yeah. When I was younger, Oh my God. I'm like, I suck. I'm never gonna <laughs> it's like, yeah, like, I don't know. You're, <laughs> you're a high school kid and you're like, uh, just, you know, trying to do the best you can. Meanwhile, like I'll never be as good as him, but the closer I get now in my career to kind of being on that level, mm-hmm. uh, crazy, the crazy part is like I'm realizing now the actual scale of kind of where he was and where I am. So it's, it's absurd to think, right? Like a couple of years ago, he was the equivalent to Kyle Dake, right? <laughs> it's like, oh, pretty good, you know? So... <laughs> Uh, you know, I have a lot more kind of, um, I have a, I have a much better idea of where okay. we stack up. Right. And yeah. I definitely still have some ways to go before I get to, you know, kind of his level. Mm. Um, but I think it's possible, you know, yeah. it's definitely within the cards, whether it turns out like that, no one could say, right. I just gotta keep wrestling and kind of see where. Where I end up. Yeah. But uh, no, I don't feel the pressure anymore. Mm. Okay. I feel like now I'm kind of my own person. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, and in some cases I overshine him, which is hilarious. <laughs> like they, like I don't know the yes, like we're, he we, he's on camera with me after NCAs. They have no idea that he's several times better than me. Right? <laughs> it's, it's so funny. You know, we, we go to we go to like uh, tournaments and stuff. Now it's like. Uh, yeah, it's, it's hilarious. Like, he's he's super humble about it, obviously. Um, but he's he's really good. And when I go back now, well now, right, especially, like, I've gotten a lot better technically. I can think at a much, like, a higher wrestling capacity. The more, I, more appreciation I have for, like, because when we're little, he's just showing, like, a single leg, and I'm like, Okay, cool. I know I did a single leg. Now I'm looking at it and I'm like, this is beautiful. Like this is perfect <laughs> technique. It's so crisp. Like he he just he does like basically his thing is like push, pull, circle, mm. shoot. Just creates this pressure, releases releases the pressure, pulls, gets you to step exactly where he wants and takes the shot and it's over like and it's so crisp and it's so repeatable. He's 50 something at this point he's hitting it the same way he did when he was competing (laughs) and it looks the exact same every time he hits it wow do you think that is there was there some type of training that he did at the ussr that was like crazy that he told you a story no i don't really talk about it too much oh really about like his wrestling days but i was like you can go and like sure look it up but um you know he, he would tell me like some stuff but uh, it's just like silly because he didn't really. It's funny because now in today, today's like you know 
several years after like his his time of wrestling, I feel like we have a much better understanding of what we're doing. Mm. Uh, you know, we have science. Like we we can understand like the science behind our actions. Um, you know, like nutrition, like recovery. These yeah. are things that they just. And it's so funny. They did it. They just didn't know why they were doing it. Oh. Like, my dad would be like, when we were younger, he'd be like, you have to eat this. I'd be like, <laughs> why? And it'd be like, it'd be like honey, walnuts, and like, like cranberries or something or like whatever. And I'd be like, this is like, I, what, what am I eating? Here? <laughs> you know? And now, now I understand. I'm like, oh, like, that's such a carb dense little thing. And it's like. <laughs> Or like he would be like, here's a funny one. He'd be like, uh, his coach would make him take a shot of olive oil. What? Oh. Why? I don't <laughs> yeah. know. My coach told me to. I did it. <laughs> uh, a shot of olive oil. Like now we understand that it actually can kick you into burning higher fats overnight. So oh. it, in your sleep, you'll burn more fats than carbs. Wow. But that's something like he had no idea. Yeah. There's Good guess. <laughs> Good guess, guys. You know, they're doing all these, these things that are like very right, but they have no, no idea why. And now today we understand, you know, you know, that was the right, that yeah. was the right choice. Well, I yeah. guess someone was keeping the secret. Someone knew what was going on, right? but they just someone. didn't say why. They were probably just doing trial and error. Like, oh, <laughs> they that guy's winning. They Do probably what he's were. Doing. Wait, so even the coaches didn't know what it did? Yeah, I don't know. Probably oh, not. It's okay. like... Pass it down. I can't years. imagine that they were like. One person did. Then yes, yeah, so literally, like <laughs> someone knew, and it was just like. You know, passed down to people. It's like yeah. this is what you do, and they have like a whole <laughs> culture around it, right? Like they know what to do. Maybe they don't know why to do it, but they know the people who have been winning were doing these things. So, if you do it, you it's your best chance, right? Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah, so with you and, like, your siblings being born in, like, other countries, is there, like, a story behind, like, how you got to... <laughs> <laughs> so, here's a funny tidbit. Um, we all have different last names. Oh, seriously? Yeah, so, I mean, I... There were, so, my, uh... It's all Arujo, or Arujov, right? But it's spelled differently. Oh. So, my dad has, like, a spelling, and his first three letters, like, O-R-O-U, Mine is A R U J, and me and my older brother have the same last name. My mom's last name is A R A, but ends in A. So hers is A R U J, A V A. So Arujava. What's the reasoning behind that? So, my dad is from Azerbaijan, my mom is from Belarus. They speak different languages, oh. in those countries, so. Of Arujov, my mom took my my father's last name, translates differently into English from Belarusian and from Azerbaijani. What? <laughs> it translate translates out differently. So, I have like the Belarusian spelling like A R U, and O R O U is my dad's Azerbaijani last name, which my little brother has because he was born in the U S. So he just took my dad's last name. Oh, oh wow. What? That's crazy. Yeah, and then uh, my mom's ends in like Arujava because like she's a woman, so like from the oh. system there, like you change the last mm, letters yeah, yeah, to, okay. to fit that. But so yeah, we all have different last names. Yeah, that's interesting. <laughs> Do you have like uh, any fun fact? You know, doesn't have to be wrestling related. Just like a fun fact. Put me on the spot here. <laughs> I. I'll say a fun fact. I'll just get started. Yeah. I guess if I was asked, I heard that it takes more energy to eat like celery than it has in it. Like you burn more calories eating celery than it has in it. Yeah, yeah. It's like you. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> <What>? <laughs> I thought you meant like I've a fun fact about well. him. No, it's just any. Yeah, just anything. It anything. could be about you or anything. Anything. Yeah. Um. <laughs> 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 so random. I, I wasn't. I wasn't expecting this. Um, you have a fun fact, Crosby? Not no. Not a fun fact. Uh, I guess if you, you could say hawks eat your chickens. No. Yeah, hawks do eat my chickens. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's you a fun fact. Yeah, hawks, hawks get them. Yeah, we have like twelve chickens and at That's least bird, like, bird on bird pile. <laughs> yes, they just dive bomb them and they just leave their like body there for a day. That's <laughs> 
Hawks dive bombing something is the the cre- Have you ever seen like a slow slow yeah, motion yeah. video? It's wow. They turn into a missile. Like, <laughs> yes. Did you ever? And see then it? at the very last, like, boom, it's just like <laughs> they're like inches away from the ground. Dude, it's and crazy. Just like, oh wow. Did you ever see this guy has like a hawk that he's like trained and he's like in a car driving? He goes like it's like like bird drive-bys and he like sets the hawk go and he gets like a mouse yes. and he brings what? it back. Yes, I saw yes. that. Did that was wild. Me? Oh, um, I do have a fun fact. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what is it? Killer whale? No, dolphins. Dolphins, um, <laughs> well, I don't know. Is it? No, it might be an orca. It's okay. Some, oh, I'm th- I wish I could remember. We get it. We get the image. They, uh, <laughs> they'll... <laughs> Yeah, it's killer whales. <laughs> <laughs> they will, like, kill things for fun sometimes. Oh, so, that's an orca. That is an orca. It's an orca. Yes. So they'll 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 like tail like like kick out of the waters like seals and just send them flying <laughs> yeah. in the air yeah. for like sixty feet. Shut up! And they just die on impact. I've seen those. And they just do it for fun because it's not like they're gonna eat them. They just like <laughs> like just hit them in the air for fun. Yeah. And oh my god, I thought that was <laughs> that's cool. what's messed up. I've never seen that on TikTok. Like, what, <laughs> dude? I gotta insert the video. Yeah. <laughs> oh my dude, god, dude, what? Imagine. Are you on TikTok? I I browse. You I don't, don't post anything, really, really. I thought about it. Um, dance videos dance, in the wrestling no, room. Not dance videos. <laughs> I was thinking of like a technique series, maybe. Mm. I don't know, but uh, well, what's, your, what's your screen time on TikTok? Screen time. I don't even want to. <laughs> Is it bad? I don't, I don't think it will be, but I don't want to yeah, put myself on yeah. blast like that if it is. Dude, one of our teammates had 14 hours of screen time. We got one of those guys, day. too. Really? I, don't, I ain't going to throw him under the bus. <laughs> anyone who, anyone, they know. They yeah. know who it is. What's your screen time? Bro, come on. <laughs> Dude. Stop, stop. <laughs> yeah. It's hilarious. Uh, you guys got anything else for me? Well, oh yeah, we do. This is the end of the pod now, and for every guest, we got so Brady Schubeck here, our producer. So he customizes these plaques. So you get number oh. nine. Oh, this you is can dope. add this right next to the national title. Oh, this is <laughs> hefty. <laughs> oh my goodness! Look at this thing. It's a weapon. Yeah, yeah it is. <laughs> this thing is pointed. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so thank you so much for giving yeah, us a privilege you. to talk to you, hear your story. Uh, thank so. you guys for you know inviting me. This is this has been a, a great chat. Oh no, yeah. that's that microphone. <laughs> yeah, that's you nice. have anything else to say for anyone watching? This is dope. <laughs> um, anything else for people watching? Um, no, nah, I think I'm. Yeah, I think I'm pretty good. Sweet, yeah. sounds good. Yeah, thanks so much. Yeah, thank you. Perfect. Thank you guys.